Hey, this is Cody Bugen over at Vestrite, and today we're going to talk about land acquisition in the development space and what you must know before you get started. So let me start off by what I mean when I say land acquisition in the development space and what I do not mean. Okay, there's a lot of raw land out there, but the question is, is it developable or is it not? Because where this business model of raw land gets really exciting and really special is if it has development potential, meaning that the property can go through an approval process and be developed into a project, say like a subdivision or an apartment complex or whatever it may be. So today I'm gonna to get into five simple concepts that you must know before you get started in the land acquisition business model in the development space. So the first element you must understand is what's called or referred to as zoning. Every market you go into, city, county, in every state, there's what's called zoning. And there's different types of zonings out there, right? There's zonings for agricultural land, there's zoning for forest land, there's zoning for subdivisions, right? Residential single family subdivisions, there's zoning for multifamily, storage, retail, I could go on and on. There's all these different types of zoning on any piece of land you see out there. And so you've got to understand how is it zoned? It might be zoned for development right now, or it could be in a concept plan, a growth area of a jurisdiction, a city or county, where they're willing to rezone it for development. And so you got to understand the ins and outs of zoning and if the property even has development potential. Because if it's not zoned for development or if the jurisdiction won't entertain the idea of it being rezoned for development, then guess what? Yeah, it might be a beautiful piece of raw land, but it's not developable. So the second element you must understand to realize if a piece of raw land is developable or not is let's talk about access because the the development right whether it's residential commercial whatever type of development it is people have got to be able to get to it and so you've got to understand what's called public right of way so is there a street a public right of way a, a a a local road a collector road an arterial road there's all these different types of roadways uh which are public right of ways is is there a public right of way for the public to be able to get to the property. There is many properties out there that might look great for development, but there is no, here again, public right of way to be able to get to the piece. So is there a public right of way stubbed into the piece, running along the piece? And maybe there's a public right of way, a parcel away. So can you get an easement, right? Or can you buy a portion of that property that separates the piece you want to go do a development on from the public right away or better yet maybe you can buy that piece but you've got to understand public right of ways slash access to, to, to understand if the piece developable or not here again if you don't have public right of way access then the property here again as beautiful it may be as much of so perfect for development you're not going to be able to develop it and the third utilities public utilities are utilities available to the property to serve the development? And not only are they there to serve the development, but is there capacity available within those lines, within those public utilities to provide the necessary capacity for your proposed development? Utilities is such a big topic and it shuts down so many developments because guess what? You might have the zoning, which we've already talked about. You might have public right away, right? A public right away, the access to the property, all those things might be in place, but all of a sudden your project gets shut down because of public utilities. So these are things like sanitary sewer, water, storm sewer, I could go on and on. You've got to make sure these public utilities are available to your site and that they have the capacity to serve your site. And if they don't, or if they're not available here again, it might be a great piece, but your development potential might not be there. Okay, on to the fourth point. This is overlays. A lot of properties out there have overlays on the property. And what, what do you mean overlays on the property? Well, if you go to the zoning map, 
right? Or you go to the different maps that are usually available on the websites of these jurisdictions, these cities or counties, certain properties actually have overlays on them, meaning that they're, they're, they're limited in their use. This could be a natural habitat overlay. This could be a steep slope overlay. This could be a, it might be in a flood, being a floodplain overlay. There's a, there's all different types of overlays out there, depending on where you are in the country. And depending on the type of overlay that's on the property, it can shut down development potential like that, because there's a very good chance that you can't get that overlay removed. And if you can't get it removed through boots on the ground studies, then it shuts down your development potential. Or it might be that you can develop a portion of the property, but not nearly all of it. The fifth element to, to understanding if the raw land you've identified actually has development potential. And actually, before I share this fifth point, I wanna make sure there's no misunderstandings. These are just five basic things that you need to understand to, to, to decide if a piece of raw land has development potential or not, and if you wanna pursue it. But I don't wanna for a second mislead anyone in, in to, for you to think that it's only these five things. But let's get into the fifth. The fifth is topography, right? The slope of the land. And see, with sewer, we or let's talk about public, uh, the sanitary sewer for a second. And that was just, you know, it's the main utility that's, you need what's called gravity flow right? Because in a lot of areas of the country, they won't let you put in what's called pump stations or pumps where you can pump the sanitary up a slope to get into the public utilities that are in the public right away, here again, the access to where to then allow it to flow. And so you've got to understand the topography of the land and your public utilities to make sure everything works. And don't, there are some jurisdictions out there though, that will allow you to pump, but understand there's a cost to that. So you need to understand that there's a cost to that when you go to look at a piece and you see a certain topography. Well, also with topography, you can have property that's, that's say really steep and you don't have any gravity issues. It runs up a hill from, from the public utility, but steep slopes, a lot of times there's overlays related to steep slopes or, or the steeper the land, the more it costs to develop the land to where it's not even cost effective to go and develop it. And so you really need to understand the topography of the land. Obviously a flat piece costs less to build than a steep piece or a piece that's sloping downhill away from your public utilities or your public right of way. A lot of times will shut down the development. So it's just another element of to, which is topography and the fifth and the final thing that I wanted to go over in this video today. So I'm really hoping you found these five points or elements helpful in understanding what do I mean when I talk about land acquisition, but not only land acquisition, but land acquisition in the development space. Okay, so land acquisition in the development space might seem complex. I get it. I understand why you're saying that. But here's what you got going for you is that I've taken the time to start an education company in this space called Vestrite. And I'll tell you what, nothing like Vestrite ex existed when I started doing this 20 years ago. So a lot of my bumps and bruises and scars, you can learn from all the things I learned through those failures, through those trials and tribulations. Because in Vestrite, I've created courses and content and education to take a space that could be seem very complex and I've tried to simplify it. Okay, I've tried to, to put it into very simple layman terms where anybody and everybody can come into this space and the barrier of entry actually is not too high. And here's why I've done that. Because the reality is so many of us today, whether it's a nine to five chained to a desk or heck, you might be a wholesaler out there having to do a gazillion deals a year to generate any type of wealth. Well, I have this burden that's been put on me. And I won't even call it a burden. I'll call it a conviction that to, to throw down the rope, to make a difference, to take these unique, unique life experiences I've had within a very unique business model and to share them with others. Because I want you to get off the hamster wheel, get away from the nine to five, if that's what you want. And there's nothing wrong with those things. But if you're looking for more time freedom, like I was, 
That's the, why I started Vestrite. Or you know what? Maybe you don't have a clear picture of how you're going to create the financial freedom you're looking for, right? Or the legacy you want for your family or exactly how you're going to be able to go live you know, that retirement life at some point. How are you going to stack the cash? How are you going to be in a financial position to live the life that you want for yourself and your family? Well, that is why I started Vestrite. And that's not a sales pitch. That is true from my heart. I started Vestrite for PIF, Purpose Impact Fulfillment. And, and Vestrite is a huge part of my purpose, which is making an impact on people like you, which brings me tremendous fulfillment. Now I want to hear from you. What questions do you have about these concepts, these elements, these five points I've shared with you. What questions do you have that are holding you back from getting started? Please post those questions in the comments and we will get right back to you. And we're excited to hear from you. If you found this content interesting and you wanna learn more and you are ready to make a massive pivot in your life for not only your life, but for your legacy, your time freedom, your financial freedom, I can't suggest to you enough, head over to vestrite.com and from there you can learn more. There's all types of content. You can set up a call with my team and we can explore if this is the right fit for you. Thanks so much for watching and we'll talk to you soon.